I'm going to share with you one of the toughest finishes I've ever had to do. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so we're going to be starting this project with a 48 inch round table made of MDF. I've already applied one coat of our foil adhesive and we've let it dry to a firm tack. The foil adhesive that we're using is by Artsyville and I'll have that linked in the comments below. So this table is very special to me. My girlfriend was diagnosed with terminal cancer and uh, I wanted to do something special so I made this table for her and it included just so many wonderful pictures of all of her friends over the years. So once the adhesive is dry, it will remain tacky until something is put over the top. So it gives me plenty of time to lay the pictures down and kind of arrange them how I want them. I intentionally left spaces where you could still see the table. What I like about this adhesive is that it will never fully dry to where it's not tacky. It'll always remain tacky until you put something over the top like pictures or epoxy or as you'll see later on, the foil. All right, so we're going to be using the decorative foils. And what the foils are is actually a pattern that has been put onto a carrier, which in this case is uh, a clear plastic. You can see that I'm cutting it to a length that's a little easier to work with. Uh, these foils come in rolls and they also can be bought by the foot. Uh, I'm taking it and crunching it up and I like to do that because it gives me a little bit more uh, of a textured look and it also gives the foil a little bit of body so it's easier to handle. I'm also going to be using a fairly firm scrub brush and a soft microfiber rag. I'm going to apply the foil where the pattern is up, is showing up so it's facing me. With the cloth, I'll very lightly rub. I'm not trying to get 100% coverage at this point. And I don't want to rub all the way to the edge. I want to create a very soft edge so that when I do my seam, you won't be able to see where that hard line is. After I rub with the rag, I'll come back with my scrub brush and I'll get a little more aggressive. And I'll make sure that I'm only scrubbing in one direction. I don't want to scrub in circles. That will transfer through my foil and you'll be able to see that. Take my finger, do the same thing. I'm making sure that I don't let that hard edge roll over the top and make a line. I want to do it very, very soft. I don't want anywhere to be able to be detected that I've added foil. When you pull it off, I'm going for 100% coverage here. And you can see as you pull the film off, the pattern releases and you're left with just the carrier plastic. In this application, I am going for 100% of the foil to release. All right, so you can see where I'm doing the pressure again with the rag. And I'm able to lift up that foil and check to see how much of that foil is coming off. If I want more to come off, that's when I grab my scrub brush. Now don't worry about the wrinkles. Anytime there's a wrinkles, you can burp the, the foil up and reapply and you can take out those wrinkles. Be really careful that you don't scratch over the foil that you've already pulled from the plastic because you can easily scratch it. So now you can see that I'm gonna start on the top and I'm going to do the same thing on the top that I've done on the edge. I'm just going to take that foil and I can go straight over those pictures because the only thing that's going to uh, cause the pattern to pull away from the plastic is the exposed adhesion that's in between the pictures. So you can see that's why I left so much of the actual table showing and it almost looks like the foil is peekabooing back behind 
the pictures. Once you have the foil over the adhesive, the adhesive is no longer sticky. I just continued to put down the foil until the table was 100% covered with either photos or the foil. All right, so as you can see, the table is 100% covered with either photos or the foil. Now, I did not mention uh, earlier, but I sealed these pictures first with three coats of matte clear spray paint. You can also use the Krylon Archival Spray, which has UV protection. But this is really important because you don't want the next step, which is going to be applying a Mod Podge to cause the ink in your photos to smear. All right, here you can see that I'm using Mod Podge. And what I'm gonna be doing is first off, coming in and putting the Mod Podge up underneath any of the pictures where there may be lifting, because this lifting if you don't uh, seal it down, will be a source of bubbles uh, when you put the epoxy over the top. Also, what this Mod Podge is going to do is take away any of the leftover stickiness that may be on the uh, adhesive where the foil didn't stick. So this is gonna take all that away and just give uh, the photos a good seal before you go to the next step, which is going to be applying the epoxy. So I suggest that you let your Mod Podge dry overnight. If possible, you wanna make sure that every bit of that moisture is out and dry or it will have a, a reaction with your epoxy. All right, so the Mod Podge has dried and uh, it's the next day and I'm coming back now with the Stone Coat Countertop Art Coat. I'm using three ounces per square foot and I'm just spreading it out evenly with my hand. You don't want to use a trial on this type of a project because you don't want that trial to catch the edge of those photos and possibly cause it to lift. Once I get all of the epoxy laid out, I'll make sure that I take my hand and roll that epoxy up underneath the edges so that my entire table is coated 100%. I'll torch three times to ensure that I've gotten all of the bubbles out and I'll let it cure for 24 hours. Okay, so after the epoxy is cured for 24 hours, I'm coming back with some vinyl uh, and we cut this on my Cricut and it is one of her favorite scriptures. So I thought by applying it to the table, I would just customize it just a little bit more. You can see that I've already added some vinyl lettering to the open space that was on top of the table where I didn't have any pictures. So I decided at the last minute that I wanted to add a little bit more uh, creativity to the table. And uh, so I came in with a gold paint pen and I just outlined each of the pictures. And I wasn't very detailed on this. I wanted it to be kind of, um, I guess, a, a messy outline, if that makes any sense. It just gave uh, a little sense of, I guess, a customized look to it. All right, so all the lettering is done. All the drawing is done with the gold paint pen and it's time to apply our final flood coat. The flood coat is just another layer of clear epoxy. We're doing uh, the epoxy at three ounces per square foot and we are using the art coat. We did add to this layer a little bit of diamond dust just to give the flood coat a tiny hint of sparkle. We always said that Patricia put a little bit of sparkle in everybody's life. 
You can see here that I'm using a trial on this layer because I'm not worried about it scratching or lifting up any of the pictures because we already have one layer of epoxy. I'm using my hands again to push that epoxy over the edge, run my fingers up underneath to ensure that those drips flow up underneath the table. This way I get a very smooth edge. I'll torch it again three times, waiting about two to three minutes in between torching to ensure that I get out all of the bubbles. All right, guys, so the table has the flood coat. The flood coat has uh, cured for 24 hours and we're ready to do the uh, ultimate top coat in gloss. And we are going to link that video in the description below for this video. I highly recommend you watch that video if you're going to be applying the UTC. All of these products, guys, are available on our website, and I'm going to be putting a link to the foils. And guess what? I have the foil lady here in my studio right now. Hello, everybody. All right. So <laughs> I am just so thrilled that you're here. Uh, Jennifer and I have known each other, what, 20 something years, it's I think? Been a while, it's yeah. been a long time. It's been a while. So introduce yourself, <laughs> tell everybody uh, where they can find these amazing foils and all the other products that you may have available to them. Well, as Rhonda has indicated, I'm Jennifer Ferguson, owner of Artistic Painting Studio, and my company has been around for 34 plus years. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes me old. Um, but we basically specialize in uh, metallic foils and also decorative rollers, which Rhonda uses all this mm -hmm. stuff and her finishes, which are amazing. Um, you can find us everywhere at artisticpaintingstudio.com on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, all the YouTube, things. YouTube, it's all Artistic Painting Studio. Yeah. And I'm super excited. Uh, I do have a link that I'm going to be posting, but I'm also, guys, y'all uh, stay tuned. I'm going to actually be uh, having her products in house on my shelf. So I will be able to ship directly to you. So sign up for our newsletter and all that information will be um, available and we'll be releasing it in our next newsletter. So sign up rk3designs.com. Okay. Stay tuned to the end of this video. We're going to show you how to do the UTC and gloss. I'm sanding my surface with 220, being really careful not to get too aggressive and leave deep sanding patterns. All right, so you'll notice that I'm doing my edges by hand. I don't want to burn through the epoxy down into my finish by using a uh, orbital sander. Once sanded, I'll clean thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol to ensure that all of the sanding dust is removed. Here I'm preparing to do the UTC. I've already prepped my rollers and I will be linking a complete tutorial on how to do the ultimate top coat from start to finish. I highly recommend that you watch that video and you use the PDF that we came up with that shows the ratio uh, of water and the mixing instructions. As you can see, the UTC is very, very thick straight out of the bottle. So that's why we add our water. The PDF can be downloaded from our website, rk3designs.com. And I'll also link that PDF in the description below. I'll come in with my first roller and I'll roll on a very liberal amount of the product. You want to make sure that you put plenty of product on that surface so that when you come back in with your second roller or your dry roller, you have plenty of material and you can feather and smooth out that surface. Again, I highly encourage you to watch our video where we have very detailed instructions on how to apply the ultimate top coat, both in gloss and matte. After I do the top, I'll come back and do my edges. And you'll notice that the UTC goes on a creamy white but will dry a crystal clear in about four hours. I give the UTC a full 48 hours before we do any type of installation or use the table. 
Guys, I hope you enjoyed this very, very special project that I did for my friend. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, guys. We appreciate every one of your views. And until next time, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.